Awesome. Well, official welcome to everyone to February's Check It Out. We always do this on the, what is it, the fourth Tuesday, which today happens to be the very last day of February. So as we get ready for March to come in like a lion or like a lamb, Janae, what kind of books do you have for us? Well, good afternoon, or good afternoon. Good morning, everybody. We have a lot of fun things, fun books planned for you today. So we're going to move to it because there's a lot of stuff I want to cover. There was questions that I saw in the chat that I didn't get a chance to answer, especially about ARCs. So I'm going to address that today. So let's get started. And let's see. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Janae jackson Doring. I'm the Youth Services Consultant for the State Library of Iowa. There is my phone number and email. So if you need to get a hold of me for book ideas, craft ideas, summer reading, help, uh, what do I do, questions, just shoot an email or a phone call and I'll be more than happy to assist you. So we're going to start with story time standouts. I kind of switched the order of things a bit because a lot of people are like, hey, I want to focus on this. I want to focus on that. So we're going to start with the story time standouts. And the story time standouts are the best books to use for story time. So this month, I picked three that are perfect for story time. Um, Notice I said perfect. The first one is Mr. Kitty is Lost, and that is written and illustrated by Greg Pizzoli. Uh, this is another winner from, from Greg because I loved the watermelon seed. Um, in this picture book, the little girl is looking for Mr. Kitty, and the readers have to use animal sounds, so counting, color recognition, to find uh, Mr. Kitty. This was a cute book, funny picture book. Um, it is definitely a preschool crowd pleaser. Um, I love the fact that it has the counting ability, counting up from one to 10, super cool, especially with colors and animal sounds. This is a winner for story time for preschool. The second book in the middle of the story time standout slide, this is called Here Comes Spring. And this is by Susan Cantor. And it's illustrated by Katia Longi. This book is a board book series, and Susan has covered all of the seasons. So there's Here Comes uh, Winter, Here Comes Spring, there's a Fall, and a Summer one as well. And for Here Comes Spring, it's a board book, a rhyming board book about what the animals see in the spring. So the animals see dandelions, they see tadpoles in the pond, ladybugs, and it's a sweet, simple board book. It'd be good for toddler story time because it only has three words on a spread. Um, so it's very simple, very basic, but it shows those concepts of spring in a rhyming format. And I'm just looking at the chat real quick. Uh, Missy said, sounds like Mr. Kitty is interactive. I love those. Yes, Mr. Kitty is Lost is very interactive. So great for that uh, preschool crowd. And for Here Comes Spring, I would recommend that for toddler just because it has those simple pictures, simple sentences, sentence three words on a spread. The third book that I picked is Spring Sings for the Grouchy Lady Ladybug. And that is written and illustrated by the late Eric Carl. Um, this would be a good primer about all things spring for both preschool and toddler story times because it has bright colors, simple sentences on a spread, very, very just right. And it has all things about spring. So counting ladybugs, birds, beautiful, beautiful pictures. You can't go wrong with Eric Carl. So those are the three story time standouts for this month. All right, we're gonna switch gears and we're gonna go to young adult. So the first book for young adult is The Black Queen by Jumata Mill. And this is a book that is a murder mystery novel. So if you have fans that are, um, Fans of One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus 
or the if you have a teen who's a fan of the Pretty Little Liars series, this is going to fit in their realm. Um, how it goes is when her best friend, the, the first Black homecoming queen at Lovett High is murdered, Duchess Simmons is convinced that something's wrong. There's just something completely wrong. She's convinced that the beautiful, wealthy, and white Tinsley MacArthur is responsible for her for the Black Homing Queen's death. And so Duchess then has to prove Tinsley's guilt, but Tinsley has an agenda of her own. This book deals with themes of segregation. Uh, if you like murder mysteries, if you have a teen that is really wanting a different type of murder mystery, you can recommend The Black Queen by Jumata and Mill. Project Not is a graphic novel, and this is by Chelsea Ferretti. And this is kind of a science fiction, futuristic graphic novel. And basically it is this young character named Ren. At the beginning of the book, he is writing to his friend Georgia, who he kind of has a crush on. He doesn't really know. He's kind of debating if he really wants to pursue a relationship with her. And he just says, well, you know, tell you what, I'm not going to write her. I'm just going to go, go see her and surprise her. So he gets on the bus, all of his stuff. He's going to go see his friend, Georgia, and he falls flat on the bus because he's trying to tell the bus driver, hey, I need you to stop. So he falls down face first on the floor. But then when you turn the page, he wakes up in a hospital bed and you're like, whoa, was that fall really brutal? I mean, did he really hurt himself? No, what happens is he wakes up and he wakes up in the year 20, 21, 22. And he thinks he's hallucinating, but he's, he's not. So he's part of a tech conglomerate, which is called Chronotech. And they sponsor a time travel program to help students in, 20, 20, in the year 21, 22, learn what history was really like back in his time, which was 1996. <laughs> and Ren is one of their subjects. So Ren is waking up to learn all this. And on top of it all, he learns that his memory will be wiped out of all things 21, 22, before he sent back to 1996. And he crosses paths with the absolute last person he expects to see in the future. And he has a bigger problem on his hands. What if the Chronotech Corporation isn't what they claim to be? This book deals with cloning. There's also LGBTQ romances in this story. It is very action packed, which I totally appreciated. I thought it kind of reminded me a little bit of Blade Runner a little bit, just because of all the time travel and the futuristic aspects of it. Um, this would be a great LGBTQ graphic novel to offer to your patrons. So definitely check out Project Not by Chelsea Ferretti. Live your best lie. We've got another murder mystery. Um, this got a starred review in Kirkers and Publishers Weekly. And this is by Jesse Weaver. And it sounds like this is going to be a part of a series. But the story goes that Summer Cartwright, she's a social media influ influencer. She's always posting. She's always posting on Instagram. Everybody wants to know what Summer's doing. And she's going to have this really cool Halloween party that she hopes everybody can see it and watch. But what happens is Summer goes missing and a post pops up on her feed saying that she'll be dead soon. And she's like, yeah, right, whatever. She just totally brushes it off. But she ends up dead and her four friends have to investigate to find out what happened to her and that no filter is strong enough to mask the lies that we tell ourselves. This would be a great book to teach about the dangers of social media for teens. If you like murder mysteries, if you have teens that are total influencers that love to post on TikTok and social media, Definitely give them Live Your Best Lie by Jesse Weaver. Excuse me. Nerd Crush. We have Nerd Crush, and this is by Alicia Emrick. 
This is a romance story, and this is about 16-year-old Ramona. She's shy. She just wants to feel seen, but she has trouble doing that. But the one place that she doesn't feel shy is when she engages in cosplay. It's a way for her to escape that shyness and be a part of something. Um, And she starts to email her crush using her online persona, which is called Rel. And so she's been emailing this person back and forth. And she's realizing that they're starting to fall for her. So Ramona then has to decide, does she want to hide behind this persona for the rest of her life? Or does she want to leave that persona behind and see the have her crush see her for who she is? So sweet romance, great for cosplayers. Definitely, if you love these types of stories, romance and cosplaying, definitely get Nerd Crush by Alicia Emmerich. And I'm looking at the chat. Um, looks like Danielle says, do we have a list we can print? Um, are you talking about the ISBN numbers? Yes. Uh, we ha- I put together a list of all the titles and the ISBNs, so you guys will have that list for ordering as well, along with the slides. It looks like Sam is going to get that posted to Iowa Learns right now. Thank you, Danielle, and thank you, Sam. Okay, switching gears. We are moving to- Could I hop in for a sec while we're paused here? I am having some technical difficulties with Zoom today. Could you, everyone, please type your name in the chat? For some reason, I cannot get the full participants list to pop up, and so I'm not totally sure who's here. So if you could drop your names into the chat, I would really appreciate it. I know a number of you have already done that, Um, but that way we can make sure that folks get credit. I am so sorry about that. Thanks, Janae. And I'm on hold for this, and I'm so excited about it. And you know me, I don't get excited about kid stuff. Thank you, Sam. And thank you. That gave me a chance to have a water break. Uh, Oh, and everybody's responding. Thank you. Um, So this is the Windaby puzzle. This is by Lois Lowry, classic author, wonderful author. Um, This is a unique story. Um, This blends fiction and history. And this novel explores the mystery and life of the 2,000-year-old Windaby bog body. Now, it also features two characters. It has Astrid. Astrid is this young woman living with her family, and she wants to be a warrior. That's all she dreams about. That's all she wants to do. And her family doesn't know this, but she's been wanting to be a warrior. And the, she meets this boy named Varric, and he has this twisted back to him. And he notices that she wants to be a warrior. And so they secretly go away from the family to like kind of a forest type area. And he's been training her to become a warrior. And this story starts out, I believe it's in the 1956, if I remember right, where crews are digging around and they find a body and it is the body of the Windaby bog. So it features photos of the actual body. There are bibli- There's a bibliography in the back of the book. There are historical notes and there's also discussion questions, which I found helpful when reading this book because Laura Slowry is explaining how she came about this story and how she could make it into a story that would be readable for uh, middle grades. So definitely check out The Wind to Be Puzzle by Lois Lowry. Simon sort of says, ah, this book was amazing. This is by Aaron Bow. This book got a starred review in Kirkus, Publishers Weekly, and the Bulletin for Center of Children's Books. So this focuses on Simon. He's a young man. His mother uh, works as a funeral in a funeral home, and his father works in uh, ministry. And the parents and Simon move from Omaha to the small town. It's it's the National Quiet Zone. It's the only place in America that doesn't allow an internet usage. 
which that'd be very hard for me to be honest with you because I'm I'm on social media and the internet all day every day. So what people don't know about Simon though is that he is the survivor of a school shooting in his hometown of Omaha. And it's the one thing he'd like to forget. So when he when they move to this town, he realizes, wow, there's no internet. So no, he he he's excited that nobody knows him. But when he goes to school, he's scared. He he looks for the exits. He looks at the buildings to make sure that he feels safe. And he finds a friend and together he's able to let his guard down. His parents are happy. He's actually found a friend and they look at the stars together and, and astronomy. This was a funny book. It, it is a quick read. I kept turning the pages because I wanted to know more about Simon. It's heartbreaking because it's so timely right now with what's going on with school shootings. Uh, but definitely check out Simon Sort of Says by Aaron Bow. Okay, moving fast to board book roundup. So we have three board book round for board books for this month. Um, the first one is called I Already Love You by Willa Perlman. And it's illustrated by Sally Walker. And this is a sweet, diverse board book. Um, and each sentence starts with, I already love your, so it could be, I already love your toes. I already love your eyes. I already love your hands. Um, and then it exp the caregiver explains how it connects to them. So one of the phrases is, I already love your fingers. They will curl around mine to say, hello, I'm here. So the baby, um, they curl their fingers, their toes, their eyes, their legs, and hair. Um, adorable picture book, very diverse picture, or not picture book, adorable board book, very diverse board book. The one up top is called Seed to Plant. Um, this is written and illustrated by Gail Gibbons. And this is kind of a condensed version of Seed to Plant, the picture book. Um, I put this on here because this would be great for preschoolers or um, kindergartners, even if you have daycares or, or kindergarten teachers that need books that talk about how a seed becomes a plant. Um, there's one to two sentences on the spread. It talks about the parts of a flower, how they grow, how seeds grow, um, pollination, and how seeds are scattered. The really cool thing I love about this book each vocabulary word is shown in bold text. So that way educators can talk about what a word means. Um, the pictures are very colorful, they're very detailed for kids, but it's told in a very condensed way for young learners. And then the final board book that I have today is called I Love You Little Truck by David and Stephanie Miles. And it's illustrated by Natasha Mullins. This is a rhyming story, and this is a story where little kids and little trucks, it, they just need to be assured, reassured of a parent's love. So you have this little truck, and he's just wondering, well, mom, will you still love me? Will you still love me if I have an oil spill accident or a grumpy day? And the mama truck reassures the baby, the baby little truck that yes, I will still love you even if you have an oil spill accident, even if you have a grumpy day. There's all different types of trucks that are featured in that board book. Um, so, and it's a larger board book. It's kind of padded, you know, those type of kind of soft padded books. So definitely put those on your Baker and Taylor cart for your board book roundup this month. Okay. Moving quickly to early readers. This was so cute. This is called I Am Born to Be Awesome. This is written and illustrated by Mikkel Renee Rowe. This early reader got a starred review in the School Library Journal this month. Each page has two sentences on a spread for early readers, um, and it's a rhyming early reader. And it focuses on the joy of being a young black child. So one of the spreads says, I am born to be awesome. 
I love the bees. I love the trees. And each page starts out with, I am born to be awesome. And then what the child loves. So you'll see the children playing in a band that they love to swim. They love to explore nature, being on a sports team and playing basketball. I love to do math and so many other uh, activities. This is an easy to read beginning reader or early reader, but I personally loved how it promoted um, boys, positive self-esteem for young boys, um, just their strength and their, and their capabilities. So this is a winner. Wonderful early reader for kids. Okay. We're moving quickly, <laughs> moving quickly to chapter books because there was a ton of chapter books. Um, first one is called Stick and Stone on the Go. This is written by Beth Fair, Fairy, excuse me, and Kristen Chella. This is part of the Stick and Stone series. There was a picture book series, and now the author and illustrator are moving into the graphic novel format. And this is the second uh, graphic novel in the graphic novel series. This did get a star review from Kirkus. And this is about Stick and Stone. Stick and Stone do everything together. They go everywhere and they're always together, um, especially if they're planning a picnic. Um, but Stone does not like lemons and you'll find out why, because the lemons drop on his head. <laughs> Um, but when picnics involve lemon and bees and caves, uh, Stone is just not sure. Stone is even, hasn't even tried lemonade, and he doesn't know what lemonade will taste like, especially with the bee's honey. So young readers will go splunking. They'll learn the words what splunking and what splunking is with stick and stone. They'll go inside a cave and face killer potatoes. Uh, they'll see Stone and read how Stone tries lemonade for the first time. And you'll get to meet a furry monster. This book also has instructions for two craft activities for kids. So this was a fun read, funny, cute, and just a fun, easy read. So definitely check out Stick and Stone on the go. Next, next item I have is, this is a nonfiction book. This is called What in the Wow? 250 Bonker Balls Facts. <laughs> this is by Mindy Thomas and Guy Raz. And this, uh, these two authors, Mindy and Guy, they are the host of the kids podcast, Wow in the World. It's the number one kids podcast. Um, I liked this selection just because it's good for kids who love the weird but true series and they want something different. Um, inside this book, there's a table of contents. It covers all different types of facts. So you have human body, dinosaurs, under the sea, um, numbers, lots of big pictures, lots of big text. It's kind of, it's a browsable nonfiction for children. It has weird facts like, did you know the human heart can beat on itself, on its own, without any other parts? I didn't know that. Or did you know that there's actual human poop on the moon from, all, from the astronauts? I didn't know that. I was pretty grossed out. <laughs> but kids love those facts. They love those fun types of quirky facts and information. They love browsable reading where they can just kind of browse, kind of like a coffee table book almost, only in a small, compact format. Um, oh, and I didn't get the ISBN number, but the ISBN number is on the sheet. Uh, so, and that's my fault. Apologize. So check out What in the Wow, 250 Bunker Balls Facts. Okay. Now we have Beaky Barnes, Egg on the Loose. This is by David Ezra Stein. This received a star review in Publishers Weekly. And Beaky... Beaky's just a goofy, 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 goofy animal. So all the inspector wanted was an egg to go in his sandwich. That's it. So he heads to the cafe. The problem? The town is completely out of eggs. And the local chef is freaking out. Luckily, he spots a lovely duo having lunch. A woman and a chicken named Beaky Barnes. 
And it's the chef's lucky day. But when the woman and Beaky have a fight over an offensive business arrangement, chicken pulled coach service, anyone? <laughs> the chaos ensues. So there's a chicken on the run, an inspector, and a woman in hot pursuit. It's told in three stories. It's funny, quirky, big illustrations. If you love kids who have, if you love graphic novels, and if you want to recommend a new one, Beaky Barnes is going to be your best bet. Next up, we have Harriet Spies. And this is by Ilana K. Arnold. This is the sequel to Just Harriet. And for those of you that don't know, Harriet lives with, is hanging out with her grandmother. And Harriet Warmer, she doesn't always tell the truth. Okay, let's face it. She lies quite a bit. Um, but she loves spending her summers on Marble Island with her grandmother. Her grandmother runs kind of like a bed and breakfast type of place. And she loves to solve mysteries. In fact, she's an A plus mystery solver. And while she's at the bed and breakfast, one of the guests at her grandmother's bed and breakfast finds that their treasured pair of binoculars has gone missing. And no one knows where those binoculars are, but Harriet is on the case. And no one believes Harriet when she says she has nothing to do with it. They just think, oh yeah, Harriet got them. Harriet took them. And she's like, no, I didn't take it. But of course, nobody believes her because she totally lies a lot. But this time she's not lying. And so she has to figure out who took the binoculars and prove it to them that she didn't do it. So definitely, if you have young children who like mysteries, this has illustrations. It has black and gray illustrations inside. So definitely, if they love mysteries, if they want something a little bit meatier, check out the Harriet, Harriet Spies by Ilana K. Arnold. Oh, and I see in the chat, let me see. Justina says, oh my God, I need our, I already love you for my own collection. Oh my goodness. And she planned her C-section for Friday morning. Congratulations. Oh my gosh, congratulations. Next up, we have the sequel to Plum, a uh, sequel to Leave it to Plum. It's called A Snow Day for Plum. And this is written and illustrated by Matt Fellin. And in this book, Plum is our peacock funny, cute little peacock at the Athensville Zoo. And him and all of his friends are going on a school field trip. And they are excited to go to a school to be featured in a presentation. All the animals are excited except for Plum. Plum is just nervous. He's never left the zoo and he's kind of scared. He doesn't know what to do. Well, their zookeeper, their handler is driving them through the snow and an unexpected blizzard happens and it strands, it, they're stranded. They're stranded at the school. Luckily they made it to the school and they're stranded. And so the principal puts the animals in the gym overnight so that way they have a place to stay safe. And so Plum and the rest of the animals are taken out of their cages by three female rats who are kind of mean girls. They're really bullies and they just rule the school. And one of the animals tries to escape and falls in the snow. So Plum now has to have courage to save the animals and keep everybody back in the gym so that way they can be taken back to the zoo the next day. I loved this book because it was super cute, just teaching kids about having courage and being brave and sticking up for themselves. Um, so if you are looking for fun, fun fantasy stories, they're just fun and light. Definitely check out a snow day for plum. And I do have a question in the chat. Uh, Rachel said, is the Harriet spies a chapter book or a picture book? It is a chapter book. Thank you for the question. And so a snow day for plum is also a chapter book. So definitely check those out. Next up, we have a new weird school. It's the Weirdtastic School Series. This is the first one in the series. It's called Miss Banks Pulls Lots of Pranks. Uh, this is written by Dan Gutman and illustrated by Jim Palin. And it focuses on AJ, 
and his friends, Andrea, Michael, Emily, Neil, Ryan, and Alexa. They are all starting the fourth grade and they're excited, they're nervous. AJ just wants to eat Oreos and relax, but they're kind of nervous about this new teacher. Miss Banks is the new fourth grade teacher. And as soon as they get into the classroom, the group quickly realize one thing. Miss Banks pulls lots of pranks. She puts whoopee cushions on their seats when they first arrive. She gives them a pop quiz where they completely got totally pranked. She even takes them outside on a nature nature trip to find the sleuth lirpa. It's a made up animal, which the kids find out a sleuth lirpa is spelled backwards for April Fools. So the kids, they're they're tired of these pranks. They're tired. They're like, look, we're going to give this teacher a taste of her own medicine. This is a funny, silly, humorous book. Um, it's a quick read full with black and white illustrations. Kids learn what a palindrome is. So if they're looking for, if you have children that are looking for a quick read, funny, silly, zany, school hijinks, my weirdtastic school will fit the bill. Okay, now we're moving on to picture books. And Susan says, my grandson loved the series from Dan Gutman. Excellent, I love it. Okay, our first picture book is called This Little Kitty. I, I, I have to tell you, this was so cute. This is by Karen, and I'm gonna pronounce this name, Obel Hanich. Hopefully I said that right. Um, but this is an adorable laugh out loud picture book for those who love cats or own cats. Um, this picture book shows the life of five cats and all types of situations from using the litter box to staying up late at night. Um, I included the picture of this uh, of this spread. It says that this little kitty finds a tasty treat. Hey, little kitties, those aren't your seats. So they're getting into the plants. They're trying to get into the cupcakes. This would be cute for cat lovers or if you're doing a cat themed story time. Um, this little kitty is just adorable. You could pair that up with uh, bad kitty or bad cat. Um, this would be great for a cat story time. Jump In. Jump In is by Shadra Strickland. And this got a starred review in Publishers Weekly. I loved the energy of this picture book. It is beautiful, it's energetic, and it's a rhyming picture book about neighborhood kids participating in Double Dutch. Um, uh, you can see the illustrations of the little girls jumping and their hair is swaying. Um, just reading this picture book just made me want to be with the kids and do Double Dutch, which I haven't done since elementary school, let's face it. Um, but there's a part in the book where there's a woman named Miss Mabel who wants to get in and into the double dutch. And the line says, hold up, is that Miss Mabel jumping in? And so Miss Mabel has one of the kids hold her purse and she teaches them to do a funky wiggle as she's jumping. It's just super cute. And she says, I could teach you a few things about jumping in. And she just enters into the, um, the double dutch game. And it shows all the kids playing, having a good time from, from sun up till sundown. Um, energetic, fun, definitely pick up, jump in. Next book I have is In Every Life. Um, this is written and illustrated by Marla Frazzi. I love Marla Frazzi's illustrations. Um, she did a wonderful picture book a couple of years ago called Stars. That is a beautiful, if you haven't get a chance, make sure you grab that picture book too. Wonderful picture book. Um, this book in every life receives star reviews in Publishers Weekly, Kirkus, and School Library Journal. This story is based on a call and response version of a Jewish baby name bless baby naming blessing, um, according to the author's notes in the front of the book. And this book celebrates the moments 
feelings and experiences, both big and small, that make up life. Uh, the pictures are stunning, they're diverse, they're inclusive, and each spread, it starts with, in every life, blessed is, it, it has that format as it goes. Um, but I showed this spread because this is the last spread. It says, and in every life, blessed is the love. And I just loved it because it shows all kinds of love. You have the two, the elderly couple at the very bottom and the, the woman's holding the walker and the husband's hold, holding her up. You have the two friends in the top right playing, being together, the little girl on the swing, the little guy play, or the man playing the guitar. Just, I loved how moving it was and it showed the all, all the aspects of life. Um, beautifully done beautifully illustrated, please pick up in every life. Okay, this is called, oh my goodness, this is called Gato Guapo. I don't know why that got put up there. Sorry, Gato Guapo. And this is by Anika Adamui Denise. And it's illustrated by Zara Gonzalez Hong. This is a bilingual counting book. This book came on my desk yesterday and I'm and I read through it and I'm like, oh my God, I gotta add this. It's super duper cute. It's about a cat named Gato Guapo. And Gato Guapo is handsome. He's got lots of style. He's got his top hat, he's got his uh, bow tie and a little scarf and his umbrella and his cute fashionable boots. And this is a bilingual counting book in Spanish. And one of the phrases says, he had nueve gatitos, all nice hermanitos, who followed him through the square. Por la acera y donde le quiera que fuera, the naughty gatitos were there. So it playfully and skillfully balances English and Spanish. And what happens is the nine, his nine uh, relative, cat relatives, they're all following him. And on each spread, you have to count. Let's count them. And it counts from one to nine. But then they're like, wait a minute, well, one to 10. But then they all are missing. Which one's missing? Oh no, where's Rodrigo? And then you turn on the other sp spread. And then the cat that's missing says, yo soy gato, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here cat. And it follows that pattern throughout the book. Super cute, super fun. Please get Gato Guapo. Next book I have is called Nell Plants a Tree and is written by Anne Winter and illustrated by Daniel Miares. This picture book received starred reviews in Publishers Weekly, Kirkus, and Booklist. And it's about this young girl named Nell and she plants seed. And she carefully tends to the seed throughout the course of her life. She's watering it. She's checking on it, making sure it gets sunlight. And she plants this seed at her grandmother's home. So while this seed is growing, you are watching Nell grow as well. And her and her other siblings. And so you see her playing, you see her reading, and you see her go from this young child up to being an adult who is taking care of the house herself. And you realize that the tree then grows to be a uh, pecan tree. And she's got all of these nuts that grow from the tree and she makes pies. It's just a beautiful, beautifully illustrated book that shows that passage of time and how things grow and how children grow. Um, so definitely pick up Nell Plants a Tree. Okay, so right now, this is what I hope to be reading in March. I just got these two books. The third one um, I got through ARCs, but I'll explain in a bit. The two books to your left, I'm gonna move my screen real quick. This one, the first one is called It's Boba Time for Pearl Lee by Nicole Chen. This came yesterday and I was so stinking excited. I was 
they know I get very excited at the library. <laughs> but with with it's time for boba tea for Pearl Lee. Pearl is a young seventh grader and her family owns a boba tea shop. But what a lot of people don't know is until Pearl finds out is that the boba tea shop is in financial straits. And so Pearl is taking it upon herself to help the family save the business. Um, I really wanted to pick this up because I thought, man, this would be a cool, cool book tie-in if you're doing a tween book discussion, because maybe you could have a boba tea program and show tweens how to make boba tea. So this would be a nice tie-in. So I'm going to be picking up that to read for March. The other book is Angie Thomas's, uh, it is called Nick Blake and the Remarkables, The Manifestor Prophecy. This, I'm, I'm, I'm actually glad that Angie Thomas is moving into middle grade. Um, this is just for that middle grade crowd. It has illustrations inside it. I don't know if you guys can see that okay. Um, it looks like it's not finalized yet, but this is kind of, she's delving into more mystery and fantasy with this one. Um, I, it got, it arrived on my desk, so I can't wait to read that. It's going to be super duper cool. Um, it's in a unique magical world where she has African-American history and folklore to create a mythology and fantasy world all on her own. This comes out in April. So um, I got, like I said, I got this early, so I can't wait to dig into that. And then Lone Woman by Victor Lavelle is a historical horror novel. And I can't wait to delve into that too. So I'm going to keep it moving because we got like 15 minutes left. And I want to make sure I answer these questions that you guys had last month. So a lot of people have asked me, where are you getting your arcs? Oh my gosh, how do I get arcs? How do I get arcs? This is what I recommend doing. What I've what has helped me is I use digital arcs and I use physical arcs. So for digital arcs, these are the two best places to get digital arcs. Edelweiss above the tree line, if you sign up and have an, and create a free account, you're able to access arcs, digital arcs that you can download to your device. Um, they have different types of books all from children all the way to adult nonfiction. Um, so that would be a great place to start. NetGalley.com is great. For both of these sites, you'll need to create a profile and be as detailed as you can in that profile about who you are, what kind of um, library you're working for, what kind of public you're working for, whether it's kid, teen, adult, and that way they're able to, you're able to tailor all those books that you want to read. They're able to tailor those uh, selections to you and for you. Um, so be as specific as you can in your profiles when you get to that point, because the more, the more that you share about your library work and what kinds that you're doing, what kind of work that you're doing, the more that they're going to say, yes, you can go ahead and read this copy. Yes, yes, yes. So be as detailed in those profiles as you can. For physical copies, physical arcs, I have had the best luck with Publishers Weekly's promotions. I don't know what it is, but they do a wonderful job of promoting physical copies. And I've received like four since starting here at the State Library. I, I don't know what it is, but um, sign up for Publishers Weekly in their promotions. I know sometimes it gets a little daunting to get all those emails, but it's worth it. I mean, I was really impressed to get physical copies of things. Goodreads also does physical art giveaways. So definitely sign up for a Goodreads profile if you haven't done that. There's a ton of giveaways that authors do. Uh, so definitely check out Goodreads as well. Some other things to consider, um, consider writing book reviews or becoming a book blogger if you have time. I know everybody's pressed for time. I totally understand that. Um, School Library Journal does a wonderful job of 
needing reviews. They, they request reviews. And if you become a reviewer, they'll send you digital arcs. They used to do physical. I don't know if because of the COVID, if because of COVID, if they've stopped that or not. Um, but Shelly Diaz is in charge of the reviews and recruiting um, reviewers. Um, so consider becoming a book reviewer for School Library Journal because you can also receive arcs that way. And then also request a physical arc directly from the publisher. You'd be surprised what what they could do. And now we are at the time where we have giveaways. So this month we have so many books. I There's so many books that, that we receive. So I'm gonna give away three, three pri book prize packs to winners this month. And if you are chosen, we will send you a book prize pack via Iowa Shares. That'll be a mix of books that I've talked about, but there's also some um, ARCs, advanced reader copies. And if you do get an advanced reader copy, just remember that they cannot be added to your collection because sometimes um, advanced reader copies or galleys, they're not finalized yet. The cover's not finalized or the text or the illustrations may not be finalized yet. So please do not add those to your collections. Instead, what you can do, you can read them or you can give them away to children and teen during a program and you cannot put them in book sale too. So I just wanna clarify that. And I just wanna also say congratulations to Justina, the, uh, our January winners. Uh, we have Justina and Sarah and Ellen. Um, congratulations to you guys for winning the uh, prize giveaway for last month. So, and Emily, I'm just looking at the chat. Uh, Emily said she reached out to Tor Teen and got put on their list for physical arcs when they send them out a couple times a year. That's a good point. So, excellent. Oh, yes, and you're welcome, Sarah. Absolutely. And really quickly, uh, oh, go ahead. No, no, I was going to pivot to this too. So, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> um, really quickly, we have some upcoming events coming up for Pop YS Live. Uh, we will have the Dynamite Dozen. That is going to be a program on Wednesday, March 8th from 1 to 2 o'clock. And that is going to be presented by Kathy Pazinski. She is the teen librarian for the Sh Shawano County Library in Wisconsin. She's going to talk about 50 programs, passing program, passive programs that you can have at the drop of a hat if you have a whole bunch of teens or a whole bunch of tweens that come in that are inexpensive that you can use at your library. You're not, you don't want to miss it. It's going to be awesome. And you can register on I Will Learns. Also, on Tuesday, April 11th, please save the date. We are going to have the whole book approach with the Eric Carl Museum of Picture Book Art. And it's going to be talking, Courtney, excuse me, Courtney is the presenter, and she's going to be talking about how to read books with children, not specifically children. Um, you don't want to miss this. We got two wonderful pr presentations. Check them out and register on Iowa Learns. I will also just make a quick note that that April Popoyas Live with the Eric Carl Museum will be 90 minutes long. So it's a slightly longer time than normal. And we are not going to have a recording of that one um, for longer than two weeks. So if you are not able to attend um, live, make sure you make plans to watch the recording right away for that one. Missy, you are too kind. She said, anyone else feel a little proud and validated when Janae highlights books you've just ordered or had on your list to order? Woo, woo. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Missy. And Janae, I got... can I do two more CE plugs? Please do. Well, the first one, and I think um, we are at the State Library at least getting very excited about this, is that our STEM fairs and Summer Reading Summit start Tomorrow we will be in Ames, or sorry, Thursday, we will be Thursday. in Ames with our first STEM fair. And 
Those did fill up really fast, but there's still lots of room to come talk summer if you want to come talk summer. And I'll put the link for all that fun stuff in the chat here. Um, but those are happening throughout March all over your district. Oh, you have a slide. Goodness gracious. You guys, Janae is just on top of it. Yeah, but I missed that book though. We got those. I forgot those. I'm sorry, guys. I forgot to get the title on the those. <laughs> And it's so much fun. Um, and then the last thing, because we are going to be running around like crazy people during the month of March, we are taking March off from Check It Out. So here we are. Yours truly, for April, Check It Out. Yours truly is going to be on the road like a mad woman throughout the month of March. Um, so I will not have a Check It Out on in March. But don't fret. Tuesday, April 25th. We will return with all your book needs. I can't wait. It's going to be fun as always. And Missy says, ah, no wonder I couldn't find it to sign up. Yes, that is the reason why. That so would again, be why. So again, no check it out in March, but check it out will return Tuesday, April 25th. And Justina says, yes, I can't go to the summer reading program things. Any suggestions for how to make up, make up those sessions? I always Ooh. get most of my ideas from the physical meetings. Excellent. Um, one, probably the next big in-person thing we'll be doing is our director roundtables, um, which will be happening in May. That Those announcements will be coming out shortly. Um, otherwise, you can catch up with the recordings from our virtual sessions, which, yes, not as great. The other thing I will say is to make a point of going to your um, district consultants office hours because those are great ways to connect um, a little more informally with um, the other librarians in your district that are doing stuff those are usually over zoom though so 